the big calls on all the big races. Welcome along to What A Shout, brought to you by The Racing Post and sponsored by Betfred. We've got plenty to get through throughout the programme today. We've got a busy week at uh, On Town Wall uh, for Doncaster's St Ledger meeting. That takes place on Saturday. So we'll be having a look at uh, some of the highlights throughout the week and then we'll be live at Doncaster on Saturday for the St Ledger. The team, let's introduce you both, Gerard and Kiels. How are you? Both of you? Yeah, all right. I'm looking forward to some more top class racing so I can forget what happened at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, yeah. you were just saying, actually, G-Rod was just saying, I'm going to hit autumn form. And you were saying, I'm just coming out of yeah, my summer form. Yeah, I just come out of my form. And I, in a big way on Saturday, yeah, I couldn't have got anything more wrong, to be honest. And it was a, a case of uh, Johnny Deneen got the money with, uh, with Art Power. What a funny race that was. The first three beaten in that race were Art Power, Brad Sell and Highfield Princess, weren't they? Really, really strange. There were some strange results, some huge market drifts that I couldn't get Ed Mortel around. Uh, but yeah, everything I, I touched um, certainly didn't turn to gold, put it that way. Well, we seem to start most of these programmes talking about the weather, and that is because you would think we're normally going to have summer ground, and always by Saturday it's soft. And guess what the forecast is at Doncaster? Well, yeah. I mean, the funny thing is we've just come out of the hottest week of the year, and Doncaster reported only one mil on, on Saturday on three on Sunday or the other way round, so that's four mil. Yet still managed to get it to good to soft in places by Monday <laughs> uh, without any appreciable rain. And now it's as hammered down all day on Tuesday. Uh, soft, it was soft in places um, Tuesday morning, uh, and it's supposed to have been raining on and off pretty much all day. So don't be surprised if it's it's soft by Wednesday. It all depends on what happens afterwards. I've seen some really scary forecasts uh, and but they've sort of disappeared a little bit i've got a couple of websites on in front of me now that are saying there will be next to nothing and another one that says there'll be loads on friday and saturday so we don't know i mean the problem is we don't know that far in advance but we do know that we've now got at least soft good to soft in places probably uh for day one you know what it's like this time of year you get very heavy dews in the morning anyway mm. so it ain't going to dry rapid not like the middle of summer if that once the temperature drops so uh i'm looking for mudlarks i think to start with Gerard, are you the same? Do you do you follow the weather as closely as Kiel's does? No, no, I do not. No, <laughs> this is the biggest. You make any difference? The Saturday. biggest <laughs> anorak yeah. with weather. He absolutely loves the weather forecast. This man, he does. <laughs> Um, no, obviously it's an important factor, isn't it? But um, I do always believe that ability comes first and uh, ground comes second. So uh, that's my the way I go about it. But nevertheless. It is going to be soft ground this week, you would say, and it could be really soft. So you definitely don't want to be looking at horses that are going to go on fast ground or have been showing their best form on fast ground recently. And just before we started the programme, you were confident in saying that your hitting form is, is, is the strike rate good at the moment? Strike rate is pretty good at the moment. Yeah, thanks, Em. Yeah. Um, now, Kiel's will, will, will be my witness here, but generally my year tends to improve as the year goes on. For one reason or another, I can't put my my finger on why this happens, but I tend to start the year slowly and then finish the year with, with a good three or four months. So let's hope that that continues this year, Em. Let's hope so. Well, before we get stuck into the action, as always, please do like, comment, share and subscribe. Overnight, we hit 50,000 subscribers on the Racing Post YouTube channel. So really, we're going to say a big thank you um, at everyone at the Racing Post to, to all our viewers, from everyone at the Racing Post, I should say, to all our viewers. There isn't a better time to sign up to the Racing Post Members Club. You can get your first two months for just £9.99. Check it out now. Are you ready to take your passion for horse racing to the next level? With Racing Post Members Club, you gain exclusive access to the best racing insights, analysis and tools. Immerse yourself in award-winning content from interviews with the sport's biggest stars to race previews and behind-the-scenes features. Get the inside track with early access to the Racing Post digital newspaper from 9pm in the evening and daily selections from our expert tipsters. Racing Post Members Club is your ultimate ticket to the thrilling world of racing. Subscribe today and pay just £9.99 per month for the first two months with the code SUMMER. See the link in the video description for more information. Terms apply. And completing our team, by no means least, a very good morning to Matt. How are you? 
Yeah, morning, Abby. Yeah, really looking forward to, to this weekend. Obviously, it's going to be a great four days. But I'll just echo what Paul Kiddy was saying. The forecasts are incredible. I'm looking at different websites here. And we're saying we've got a deluge every single day, and, and some are showing hardly anything. So who knows what's going to happen? But we're certainly looking on the soft side of good. Talking about Fed St. Ledger, the rest, obviously, lots of money today on account with the ground and, and the potential forecast. So he's the one for support. Now a top price, Gregory, who's eased in the market. So uh, maybe it's not all as cut and dry as we thought early on in the week. Maybe a rest could turn up at Doncaster on Saturday. Well, let's hope so anyway, because that would uh, add another dimension to the race. Let's get underway with, uh, with our preview. We're going to be looking at the best races uh, from Thursday and Friday. And we're going to start with the Betfred Mayhill, three o'clock on Thursday, a group two for two-year-olds. Matt, how do they bet here? Yeah, this is pretty wide open. I mean, last year we had a 40 to 1 winner in Polly Pot. The year before was 2 to 9 favourite in Spiral, so two very different ends of the spectrum. I'm not sure we're going to get either of those extremes this time around, but Darnation is your favourite, 9 to 4. Obviously, very impressive on soft ground in the prestige stakes, and won previously with Dig underfoot. Roman over, she was impressive at Salisbury, winning by 7.5. Flens, not when you see also win by that margin. I was really taken with Mary Bella. It's a, a race that Rafe Beckett won last year at Newmarket with a potentially nice type. She was impressive, but that was on quick ground. That is a concern. She's at six to one. Uh, she would have been my pick on decent ground. We're a little bit worried about the uh, about the rain. It's seven to one bar. So look, yeah, nine to four donation, six to one bar. It's a, a very competitive uh, renewal of the Mayhill this year. Mm, and I think uh, we probably all agree Darnations looked quite smart in the process and probably warrants its place at the top of the market. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think she'd, I think she'd be hard to beat. I mean, they, you know, she's obviously won 10 lengths on soft ground and a novice at, at Thursk and then she won the uh, uh, prestige, prestige at Goodwood last time. And at Goodwood last time, it looked like she was getting swallowed up um, turning for him, coming against the rail. And she dropped back a couple of places and then and came absolutely flying through, one going away. Stamina, one of that over seven furlongs. This is going to be a mile on soft ground. You know she's going to she's going to get home really really strongly. Uh, and yeah, I think she's going to I think she's going to be hard to beat. It's not it's a race not short of <clears throat> potential candidates to step up. Obviously because she's the one that's running group company, uh, and some of the others haven't. Some have, uh, and, and and run well. But I think she's definitely the one to beat. And I, I'm not in a massive rush to go against her. Although I know Rodders is. Yeah, dead keen to take her on. I, I don't get me wrong, she's obviously got the best form in the race. We know she goes on soft ground, but there's a couple in there that I like. One uh, is Roman Over, who Matt said was mildly impressive at Salisbury first time out. Messing around with my time analysis, the time was very good. Um, <laughs> uh, the best time in this race, um, and she won it by seven and a half lengths. And I like it when you get all stuck wins by a long way in a and good time. the time is good because it's usually a sign that the, the, the horse is just in a, a different class and uh, she definitely was that day. Um, she raced with a hood on that day which maybe she's a bit free and that would be a little bit of a concern wouldn't it if it came up really soft but Ollie Sankster did put her in a listed race first time out on soft ground so she went off 80 to 1 she was well beat did everything wrong but he must have thought she would she would handle soft ground mm. and the other one is is Lay Blur uh, Richard Hughes's runner uh, definitely wants a mile. Uh, every, what, her last two starts, she's doing all her best work at the finish. One of them was behind Fallen Angel, I think, is, is that what it was called? The horse that won the Group 1 um, at the Curra um, on uh, Sunday. And Soprano was second, that went on to be placed in a group race next time. And she was coming home like a train that day, Le Bleu. And then they run her on heavy ground in Deauville, and it was exactly the same. She's absolutely flying at the finish. Definitely wants a mile, that horse. So, there are my two against the field, Roman over to win and uh, Labler each way. Ryan Moore's booked as well. The Park Hill Philly Stakes at 3.35 follows this. It is a mile six and a half furlongs over the ledger distance. And Matt, this is quite an open race, very competitive. It is, yeah, obviously it's been blown wide open. The three antipose favourites weren't declared for it. So Sumo Sam is a favourite at 7-2, to two, who obviously blew the Lily Langtree apart. But he put up £15 for that. And, you know, was well beaten in the Queen's Vars, was well beaten in Handicap Company. You just think... That was an anomaly on that ground. Tom Marquand from the front, lacking it on quick thought. I mean, fifteen pound. I thought it's a massive overreaction. But you know, she's in there at seven to two because of the rain that has fallen. We've got six to one. Then both Boogie Woogie and Golden Lyra. Thirty to two uh, for Ching Shi for David Simcott. I thought the interesting one was was Night Sparkle first from for Andrew Baldwin. Again, the ground a little bit of a concern, but pitched in here in. To, uh, group two company on first start for the I joined from Mick O'Callaghan in Ireland. She's actually rated 110 over hurdles. I think they'll be exploiting that uh, in the not too distant future. But it's interesting to go on to Andrew Baldwin and these horse in the Barbara Keller silks. They usually do well in group company. So uh, I thought she was of interest if she handles the ground. But you're right, you're right, Em. Seven to two by the field. 
looks a real wide open renewal. Rodders, we'll start with you here. What's your take on this? What's the angle? I liked C theme until uh, she got pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now it's a different race, as Matt said. All, all the favourites have been pulled out. I think the um, if the rain comes, obviously Sumo Sam will be very, very difficult to beat. She was ridiculously impressive when she won at Goodwood. And I, I obviously have to put a rating on that. And I just did not know what to do. Um, because when you see all she win by that far, but then was she the only one in the race who handled the conditions properly? Probably that was the case. I think I gave her 109, which is about par for a group three, and this is a group two, and the lead entry was group two. But nevertheless, if it does rain, we know she absolutely loves these conditions. So I think she'll, she's definitely the one to beat. And um, I think she'll win, but I, it's not, she's not the sort of also I would back at what might be a short price if the rain comes. So I was looking at Divine Jewel um, for, for, for Roger. Roger Varian, um, run a couple of decent races, ran in that weird race at Chester last time, won by Shanro, when Lone Eagle and uh, Military Order both uh, disappointed. But um, maybe that was a better race than it looked at the time. The, the, the time of the race was OK. So, yeah, I, it's not a race that I have a strong opinion on, as you can probably tell. I think Sumo Sam is the one to beat, but I'll probably back Divine Jewel against her each way. Have you got a stronger opinion, Kiels? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, well, if you I mean if you fancy a rest for the ledger, which I do, and I've, I've, I've backed him uh, this morning, then you got to think. Well, hang on a minute, Ching Shi wasn't exactly beaten far, far by him, and was staying on really strongly at the end. She is out of Madame Chang, who obviously won the Philly uh, um, at Ascot on Champions Day on absolutely bottomless ground. Uh, she obviously handles uh, soft ground very, very well. She stays very, very well. She's just come off a career best. Uh, I think that's some of the best form in the race, and I think she'll she'll like a little bit of extra yardage too. So I think she's going to go. I think she's going to go really, really well. Yeah. Well, let's skip on to Friday. Two twenty-five is the Flying Childers, a Group Two over five furlongs. Fast and furious, Matt. Uh, how do we price these up? Yeah, it certainly will be blinking. You'll miss this one. Um, at Big Evs, obviously, all the talking us about the non-flow. Disappointed in there. But you go back to Glorious Goodwood on soft ground. He did that nice. He's at 3 to 1. Inquisitively, an impressive winner at York in the listed company is at 7 to 2. Uh, and the one that I like, Flora Bermuda. Now, this one's been really well supported this morning. Remember how good she was on soft ground at Goodwood. Uh, she beat Juniper Berries by four lengths. That form kind of ties in a little bit with Relief Rally, and that's smart form. And I think soft ground's clearly the key to her. So she's been well supported 5 to 11 to 2, Killian, 8 to 1, Barb. But yeah, another competitive race. It's, it's a theme so far, isn't it? It's all competitive so far at Doncaster this week. Let's start with Big Evs, the Malcolm winner. What did you make of this one's run in the Nunthorpe? I always thought that that two year film wasn't great anyway, uh, and I wasn't surprised that he got beat. I mean, I mean it wasn't absolutely rock hard ground as well now. I know, he's, he, he, know he won his race at Royal Ascot and, and it was pretty quick, but it was very soft and good. But I think he had two very hard races as well. I think we've got to give him credit because he had a really, really hard race at Ascot and he had an incredibly hard race at Goodwood because obviously that ground was terrible when he just when he just hung on. So I'd forgive him it, whether I'd be in a massive rush to be backing him after he's done that. I mean, these two year olds, once they go, they go. Like, you know, I'm not saying he has, but I would be certainly inclined to to take him on. I do like Flora Bermuda as well. You just have to see her, see the way she won at uh, Goodwood to know how much she likes soft ground. She absolutely bolted up that day. Um, Juniper Berry's won the group three at Salisbury the other day as well. She was second when she saw second or third. Um, so, yeah, I, I think everything has come in her favour. I'm not, not at all surprised to see the price disappear this morning. I like Graceful Thunder. She will definitely like soft ground. She's run two races in France. I'm not going to pretend that I know a lot about the form, but she did uh, finish behind two British and Irish trained horses last time, one trained by Andy Dome McGuinness and one Carl Burks. Um, the time of those races are very good. They're both on testing ground. She made all when she won at Beverly. I think she's pretty fast, and uh, if the ground comes in her favour, she'll run really well. It'll be interesting to see who rides, won't it? Because uh, Ammo Racing... Of course, I had Kevin Stock booked up on this horse. Now, I don't know if he's keeping those rides or, or if they're going to change the jockey at the last minute. But, um, yeah, it'd be fascinating to see who rides. But I think Grace Wolf Thunder uh, has got a good chance here each way.
Mm. I thought inquisitively was another one that we should add into the mix. So one the roses stake kept pretty nicely at York last time. But uh, all in all, yeah, a good renewal of, of the Flying Childers. That's at 2.25. The three o'clock is the Betfred Doncaster Cup. Group two over two miles and a furlong. And I think heading the market is a popular old horse, Matt. He is, yeah, Cole Trails. He won the race last year and then he is five to four. And you know what? He's one of the most... I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. Everyone talks about Courage, Mon and Me, Elder, Elder, all those sexy types. I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. He's so consistent and he's your five to four favourite. The ground has come right for Trucian, but... Is it the same Trucian that we used to know and love? I'm not convinced. He's had that long layoff. And Sweet William, obviously, all eyes will be on to see if he's he's declared. Even if he is, he's still got a stone to find on Coltrane, uh, despite that e ball run-up effort. Then 7-1 to one Broom. I thought Shamro would be 12-1 well, if the race was to cut up if Sweet William doesn't go. I thought it was quite impressive at uh, Chester last time out. Yeah, that is of interest each way. But, yeah, a Coltrane. I expect him to retain his title. And, uh, as I said, I, don't, I think he gets the credit deserved. He's a grand old star war. He really is. I love this horse. I'm going to start with you. Um, he obviously won the Lonsdale last time. He won this race last year. Is he very much the one they've all got to beat? Definitely, yeah. And what a horse he is. Know. Amazing. You know, they're, they're so consistent. Just turns up every time and runs to, to a really high level. He really tries hard, doesn't he? Oh, you he just does, have yeah. him down as a sort of warrior. He even never in, really lets anyone down. No, even in the weird races where he got beaten by a quick fawn a couple of times, he, he still led them home, didn't he? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a super horse and it was great to see him have a, a big day, wasn't it, at York. Uh, he's by master craftsman. He, he should go on soft ground. He's got formal good to soft ground, hasn't he? Um, and he is 100% uh, the one they've all got to beat. Uh, and he will definitely turn up and run to a high level. It's just whether anything can improve past him. Uh, Sweet William is obviously the one that you Im immediately would come to mind as the potential improver. But then you look at his price and he's... He's fairly short in the market for a horse who's achieved what he has. Mm. Uh, he's a good, improving horse, but he's not in the same sort of class that um, Coltrane is in. So I expect Coltrane to win. The alternative for me would probably be Broom again. Uh, getting a bit fed up, keep giving Broom more and more chances. Yeah, I've given up on him, but he's a fast ground horse as well, isn't he, really? Well, he has one on soft, hasn't he? But, um, yeah, I, Coltrane will probably win, and he's, he's the right favourite for me. Yeah, I love Coltrane. I also love Trushan, although I haven't forgiven Trushan for beating Coltrane last year at Ascot when I, was, I, I, I had a decent <laughs> bet on, on, on Coltrane. Um, he had a wind up, right, so there may be, you've got to remember, he beat Coltrane last year, he's getting three pound off him. He's going to have the ground in his favour. Uh, you know, I'm half tempted. I'm half tempted because he does stay very, very well. I get exactly what Rodder says about Sweet William. Sweet William. He might be that good on soft ground, though. He didn't half win that race easily at Goodwood. I know it was a handicap mm. or something in the 90s. But, you know, these stayers, when they get on a roll, and I think he is an out-and-out -out stayer as well. Uh, so I wouldn't rule him out either. Uh, so I'm basically saying I have no idea what I want to put up here, really. So. <laughs> He's a funny also, like Sweet William. He's it's... talking himself around in circles, trying to work <laughs> yeah, out I his can, head at the same you know, time what he's going to do. But the thing is, it, you know, it's one of those, I can make, I think I can make reasonably cogent cases for the first three in the betting, and I, you know, I, that means I don't really want to bet. But, if he uh, was six to one, right? I'd like to see True Sham win. If Sweet William was six to one, I think we'd be sitting here saying, great but chance. You've got to give him a chance. Yeah. He's yeah. A, he, he's on the short side. But yeah, at the price, he just looks short, doesn't he? He is on the short. And against side. top top stayers. I'm going to say Trushan because I do love him just that little bit more than Coltrane. Oh. But it's oh. not it's not not exactly form based. Just, okay. Just there. <laughs> oh, sweet kills. <laughs> and finally, the 3:35, uh, the Mallard handicap for mile six and a half. Always a competitive race, and I feel like these two might come into their own here. They love a good handicap, but Matt, how do they price them up? Yeah, they, I know they say they do, and I'm, I'm pretty sure Paul Keith probably backed the goat already because that price has collapsed. I missed again. it. You've missed it. I missed it. I was literally going race by race this morning when I was seeing the what's it, and I got round to that, and I thought, crikey, ten to one, and when I logged on, it was nine to two. <laughs> so that was it. Yeah, no, I missed it. Yeah, totally on account of the ground as well. They had mm. Fox Journey fifteen lengths behind at Big Goodwood, so the, the goat in there was favourite. A hey, Merrick the top way is at six to one. Big Door had a really good comeback. Uh, last time I finished not far behind Trollerman, who went on to win the E ball last year, and I thought it was a really good effort. Top of the ground off season at 30. The, uh, the, the Spring Cup winning duo, Ed Bethel and Colin, uh, Callum Rodriguez, is interesting. That's very likely raced at 7 to 1. But yeah, it's all about the go. The market totally changed this morning on account of the rain. It was so impressive. He was dotting up the Goodwood, and uh, with the rain coming, are we expecting something similar at Donny on Friday afternoon? 
Snoozy lose. This is not normally yeah, the case with you. Yeah, it's not a case of snoozing. I, just, you know, I can't look at all the races at the same time. <laughs> Why? Well, you know, so I missed. So I missed out. But when you look at it, yeah, I mean, he won that race by absolutely miles at uh, uh, Goodwood, didn't he? Beaten next time, but so what? We've got a Merrick and Bagdor at the top of the at the top of the betting. Otherwise, a Merrick's been a non-runner because of the ground being too fast. Bagdor's form's all on fast ground. Fox Journey's form's all on fast ground. Finished miles behind the goat at, at Goodwood. Um, my only interesting thing about this is obviously the goat is trained by Andrew Balding and so is Berkshire Rocco and Ushi Murphy is the man on board Berkshire Rocco or he was when the, when, when the five days came out. Mm. Uh, obviously five days came out when the ground was fast so they may change but you've got to remember that Berkshire Rocco has finished second in a St Ledger. He has won a listed race on soft ground at Ascot. You know, he has just finished fifth in an e-ball. He's got a rating of 97 now. So he's got course form, he's got ground form. He's coming back to form. He's extraordinarily well handicapped on what he used to be capable of. So I think I'd just go with him anyway. I hope that Ashim Murphy um, rides him and not the goat. OK, had the prices not crashed, at what price is the goat attractive to you at? Uh, God, that's such a difficult one, isn't it? Because we're talking about before the decks have been made. Uh, and I half, you know, I could almost make a case from still being a bit of value at five to one because I half expect quite a few of those at the front of the market not to get declared. So, yes, I think he'll probably be shorter. If he is, in court, of course, an intended runner, and we don't know that, like I said, Andrew Baldwin has two in the race. Might run them both, but uh, the one that was jocked up was Berkshire Rocco. What do you think, Gerard? I just don't know. I think this is a very difficult race. <laughs> um, obviously, the goat is he loves soft ground, doesn't he? And, and, and if it does get really soft, he's going to be very, very difficult to beat. Um, I tipped and backed Berkshire Rocco at a big price in the e -ball last time out and just scraped into fifth, which was enough uh, for a place return. But I did have him slightly below his previous run. Um, nevertheless, he's well handicapped, coming back to form, light soft ground, and I can see the argument for him. And I suppose it'll be a bit clearer once we know what's running, what the ground is like, and whether a lot of these fast ground horses are going to turn up or not. Uh, if they don't all turn up, the goat could be a lot shorter than he is, like Kiel says. So, the short answer is, I don't know. Pleased to say that we have Andrew Balding joining us live on the programme to add a touch of brilliance to it. So, AB, how are you? Very good, Emma. Thank you. Good, good. Busy morning as always on the gallops. Plenty of owners. Yeah, we sort of this time of year is pretty pretty hectic. Obviously, got plenty of horses still in training and, and hoping to run and. Uh, yeah, lots of visits at the moment, so yeah, it's been pretty busy. Yeah, and sales season started as well, so that adds another dimension into things too. Yeah, it does. It's always this sort of through to the beginning of November, this this last last charge in the in the autumn is busy not just with the runners and the work going on at home, but as you say, with the, with the sales season happening as well. So um, anyway, that's why we do it. Yeah, you do, and you love it, and you're fantastic at it. But I'm not going to ask you about every runner at Doncaster because that will that will take a very long time. I'll just get a line or two from you from from some of the obvious horses. Um, Al Shabab in the Valuable Sales Race. We'll start because you've three in this. Yeah, we've got three. I mean, obviously, with the prize money as it is, uh, and it's an early closing race and it closed in March, I think. Um, you get to this stage of the year, they've got. All three of my runners have got a fair bit to find on, on official ratings, but as, as you're well aware, the prize money is fantastic, uh, right the way down to sort of 10th place. And you know, the owners have paid a large amount of entry fee to be there, so as long as they're sound and not going to be too inconvenienced by conditions, we'll, we'll give it a go. But um, all three of them have got a bit to find on, on ratings, but I think all three have, have improved with the experience they've had so far, so they're in a good place, really, hopefully, to run career best and, and hopefully pick up some prize money. Al Shabab, Imperial Express and Celtic Warrior. In the May Hill, See the Fire is one from one and was really quite impressive at Newmarket. Yeah, she's a beautifully bred filly, obviously, from, you know, she's always had a lot of quality in her work at home. Uh, it, was, it wasn't a great surprise that she won well on debut and uh, this was always the plan it was, was to, to come here for the May Hill. Uh, I think she's potentially a very high-class filly, although lacking possibly experience um, compared to a couple of her rivals. But 
I would have thought conditions would suit her well, and I'd be disappointed if she didn't run a big race. Mm, sounds like you, you think plenty of her. Night Sparkle in the Park Hill, um, having her first run for you, how have you found her since joining you? Yeah, well, we haven't had her very long at all. We've probably only had her 10 days, uh, 12 days. Um, she was bought from Ireland, came into us, been very happy with the way she's uh, the way she's settled in. She's eaten well. She's done one faster piece of work and looked very happy doing it. So uh, obviously the form she, she had for her previous trainer was, was on a sort of pretty pleasing trajectory and um, and uh, she won very well, beat a horse of mine at uh, Newmarket last time, giving her a lump of weight and quite impressively and, and uh, you know, was, was obvious, we were always looking for, well, Alistair Donald's always looking for a nice horse for Barbara Keller um, and she ticked a lot of boxes and we'll probably, obviously we're chucking her slightly in at the deep end first start for us, but she, she stays well and seems to handle any ground, so hopefully she'll run there. Yeah, interesting. I think there's quite a lot of rain forecast, isn't there? It's already soft, I think, um, with, with rain forecast. Flying Childers, Flora of Bermuda, um, looks like she's crying out for this trip. Yeah, she has no problem with the ground. Obviously, she won in, in, in a mud bath at, um, at Goodwood. It was very impressive doing it. It was really quite disappointing at York. Um, and we don't quite know the reason for it, but you know, perhaps she didn't stay the six furlong, so we know she's effective at five, and that's why we're going to be dropping back in trip, and hopefully on with, with, with slower conditions, uh, it should suit her well. In the Doncaster Cup, is Coltrane very much the yard favourite? Yeah, he is. I, I mean, he's a special horse. He's been a you know joy to train, really, and he's given us some fabulous days, and he's, he's had another great season this year. He's won the Cigarro. Was second in the Gold Cup, third in the in the Goodwood Cup, and won won the Lonsdale. So, you know, it's it's he's had a fabulous season already, and hopefully we haven't finished yet. We've got the Doncaster Cup, and, and you know, hopefully the stairs and keep the Champions League. He really deserved, I think, in everyone's book, to win the Lonsdale last time, and of course, he won this race last year. He did. He didn't have to carry a penalty last year, so uh, it's a little bit tougher this year, and. You know, True Sham should get his ground again if he's anywhere near back to his best. He's a very formidable opponent, so um, giving him the, the penalty isn't going to be easy. OK, quick words on a couple in the Mallard, because you've got a strong hand here with the Goat and Bark Scirocco. The Goat has been very well backed since the rain arrived. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the, the obvious reason, and Bark Scirocco will more than likely go to Salisbury as a result. He wants, he wants quicker ground, so, no, the, the Goat... We had to skip on on Saturday because they didn't get the rain at Haydock, um, and this was the obvious alternative. So, yeah, the ground should suit him, and hopefully, them up. Uh, on Saturday, Sandrine and Holgan in the Park Stakes. Yeah, I think it's probably more likely that we'll go with Sandrine. Holgan's a little bit to find on the ratings, and he's got some alternative possibilities for him. Um, so, Sandrine ran very well in the City of York. She's effective on on any ground, really. Uh, and, and looks to have a, a strong chance, um, particularly as the, you know, the rains come, she should be sure. And just one final runner I want to ask you about at Chester, um, Sea of Roses in the listed race, because the form of the Ribblesdale is working out incredibly well. Yeah, that, and she ran a very good race, I thought, in the Glasgow Stakes. I mean, obviously the horse that beat her is, is going for the St. Ledger, but I think it's a strong effort. Um, she thoroughly deserves to win a listed race. She's been group placed and listed placed. Um, and, and hopefully she she handled Chester and go well there. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Are you going to Doncaster? I'm not. I'm leaving that in the capable hands of Annalisa. She's much better at doing that sort of thing than me, and I can concentrate on the horses that are here. Brilliant. Good stuff. Enjoy it. Thank you, and good luck. Thanks, Emma. Some big players at Doncaster this week for Andrew. Many thanks to him once again for joining us. Well, before we get stuck into our best bets of the week, go check out racingpost.com forward slash free bets. See how you may be able to get £200 of free bets. So, best bets of the week. Something on Thursday or Friday, G Rod, that you have a strong opinion on. Yeah, 225 at Doncaster on Friday is Graceful Thunder. That's my best bet of the week. Brilliant. Kiels? 
3.35 on Thursday, because I think we can be most certain that it'll be pretty soft there. Ching Shi, daughter of Madame Chang, chased home what might end up being the ledger favourite on Saturday. A rest last time. OK. I'm in the Doncaster Cup uh, on Friday, Group 2. Two miles and two furlongs, and it's last year's winner. It's not a great prize, but simple. I think he'll win. Matt, what do you fancy? Yeah, I know for the 410 Friday race, we haven't discussed La Isla Mugers, who's just behind there is the door at Goodwill. I think the extra two furlongs and a two pound turn around the weights. Very likely race for Rafe Beckett. I think La Isla Mugers will take plenty beating in the 410. Good stuff. Matt, are you going racing at all? What's the plans for the week? Or are you watching oh, from, uh, from home? Yes. No, no, I'll be up there on town more. So I'm going to get up there, join for a race on Friday and there all weekend for Saturday and Sunday. So at the minute, I might even get there on Thursday yet. So we'll have to wait and see. But yes, I'll be enjoying myself. I'll be at Doncaster. I'll be with you guys on Saturday morning. Brilliant. Good stuff. Look forward to it. To G Rod, I, are we going racing or not? No. Not this week. Yeah, very busy week this week because obviously uh, the last, what I consider to be the last big week festival, festival. Uh, of the summer. Um, is this one and uh, yeah, there'll be plenty uh, on um, in the office so yeah sadly no all, all work and no play for me um. <laughs> can't believe it that's the first <laughs> Kiels now I know you are going racing at the weekend yeah well crack of dawn leaving for Donny on Friday morning so should what's the crack of dawn in. oh we'll be leaving about four or four something like that oh whoa yeah gotta get there long way isn't it well, it's not that far. It's a couple of hours on the train. Get there, have some breakfast. Uh, got, he's got to set up all the camera stuff for Saturday, so we've got to be there now. We've got to be, we've got to be at the course, basically, before it opens to get all the stuff in. So, so there we go. Then a day at the racing, and then another day at the racing, and then come back Sunday morning and disappear for a month after that. Love it. You're going on holiday, aren't you, mm -hmm. for, to America? Mm-hmm. Well, OK, question. Will you follow the racing? Mm, no. I would not. I'm not intending to have a, a look. I may flick at the results. I may flick at the results uh, for Arc Weekend, but I'm going to switch right off. Well, I will be live with you on Townwall on Saturday. Very much looking forward to that. We'll be live at 8:30. Keith Melrose will be with us. We've also got a special guest who we'll reveal later in the week. In between now and then, good luck with the punting. We'll see you on Saturday. Mm -hmm.